<laughs> Welcome back to the FIDM studio. Ryan Camden here with the All-American Reggie Brooks. And uh, yeah, let's jump right into it. Notre Dame, Michigan, under the lights at South Bend for what could be a, a very long time. What are your immediate feelings, expectations, emotions going into this game? This is a this is a tough one. I mean, this is a, a rivalry that uh, you know has a lot of different um, components to its history. Um, you know, probably the most significant one in my mind is you know the fact that two winningest programs in the country um, not being able to play. So that battle is always there and it's always in the back of your mind. And as a former player, you know, it, it's something you you, you definitely um, look to in regards to um, uh, just. From a sentimental standpoint, it's going to be missed. I know a lot of the former players will miss it. And I think it's something except some of the current players will miss because, you know, that's a fertile recruiting ground for us. So it's a lot of guys that are from Michigan or from around the Michigan area, it being so close that, you know, you always want to be able to have that opportunity to play against, you know, guys you played against in high school or, you know, um, you know guys that you're competing with on the recruiting trail. So it, it, it's definitely an aspect that we lose that, you know, would have been nice to continue, but knowing what, as Coach Kelly talked about, you know, what's to come, you know, the opportunity to play at Texas and Georgia, you know, that that's something that, you know, you know, dates back to, you know, we haven't played Georgia since the <laughs> Sugar Bowl. So it, it you know, creates a lot of opportunities to play some teams that are, have a marked history just like a, a Michigan. A lot of excitement in, in many facets. Of course, Michigan coming off that win against Appalachian State in week one, 52 to 14, but jumping into the series history here, uh, and there's enough of it to fill an encyclopedia or two. The two teams met in 1887 for the first time, but then they only met twice from 1909 to 1978. The Wolverines have actually postponed this series four times, and oh yeah, Notre Dame passed Michigan in 2013 for the all-time college football winning percentage. And we kind of touched on this before the presser, Reggie, uh, but your players to watch, and on defense, the sophomore from Mission Via Hill, California, Max Redfield. Coach Kelly talked about it in his press conference. He said he could hear the cornerbacks communicating from the quarterback room. How important is he going to be in this contest against the Wolverines? He's going to be critical. I mean, this is the guy on the back end because once you get past the safety position, there's nothing else out there. So, <laughs> you know, other than the end zone. So, we're going to need Max to really step up from a communication standpoint and a confidence standpoint. He has to understand where, you know, we have a trip set here. Understand where's the vertical to be able to come over the top and help the, the single single side receiver. But understand, hey, uh, where is my safety on the other side to get Elijah set up in, in a position to come up and make a play? You know, coming up on the, on the in the run game. But the biggest thing that Mac, Max has to do is play with confidence. That's going to be critical for him is to understand, hey, I have this covered. I understand this game. I understand my responsibility, and I'm going to help get these other guys lined up and take on that, um, that mantle as the, the communicator in the secondary. And it's, it's not easy. You know, I played in the secondary. I actually played <laughs> against Michigan. We'll talk about that and, in a second. And that's a, <laughs> that's a tough aspect because you're, you've got so many things going through your mind and you're trying to get ready, you know, is number three vertical, is number two vertical, where's the tight end, where's, you know, am I reading through the um, offensive guard to the quarterback, you know, what are my keys? So you're not really thinking about talking to somebody, you're just trying to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do, but it's, it's of utmost important that he's able to communicate when there's a shift, when there's a, a motion in that offense where it changes the set because it can it, uh, easily change a protect, I mean, change a, 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 a back end call, I could change a blitz. Yep. You know, hey, I have a hot read. You know, wh where's this guy going based on what I'm seeing? I have to be able to communicate that to the cornerbacks. And there's also a level of communication between the safeties and the linebackers. Max Redfield, three tackles versus Rice in the way. Devin Funches exploded for three touchdowns in Michigan's first game. Huge play coming up in the secondary for the Irish. And on the offensive side of the ball, uh, another kid, the senior from California, Amir Carlisle, wide receiver, kick returner, uh, had a great game against Rice, two catches for 54 yards, two returns for 49 yards. How will he factor into this game? Well, I really think uh, with the receivers, our inside guys, you know, Will Fuller and Amir Carlisle. Amir Carlisle is the starter. His ability to get off the line is going to be critical, and they talked about it, how physical and aggressive Michigan's def uh, defensive backs will be. And that inside receiver, 
is going to be the guy that's going to have the best opportunity to get off the ball because usually he's not on the ball to where you can get up in his face. So he'll have a little more running room. And you see here on this corner route, uh, the, 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 the seam route here, he makes the catch. That's that ability to get inside the safety, use his speed, good job setting up the safety, sticking him. And then, you know, later on, he had a corner route that he caught. Um, but this is the guy that, you know, along with Will Fuller, we're going to be key components in the passing game and the ability to stretch the defense vertically and op open up some opportunities for our outside guys. So I'm looking for, uh, you know, Amir Carlisle to really step up. You see him here on the corner, corner route. Again, opposite of what the, you know, you ran the seam route where he stuck and went to the post. This time we shift, shift the pocket, move the pocket. He gets over the top. He's running off the safeties. Usually this is the guy that's going to be playing um, off the safeties in the, in the linebackers. So can they run with him? I don't think they can, and that's where I think Amir Carlisle is going to have an impact in this game is his ability to work the inside uh, of the defense. I'm very excited to see Carlisle, but Pro Sice and Fuller, too, after they have huge games. It does a lot, a lot for a kid's confidence, and I'm waiting to see how they respond against the Wolverines. And now your three keys to the game, Reggie, and, and the first one I think is pretty obvious for both teams. Win the pig play battle. How does that change momentum in games? Well, those explosive plays. We talk about you know those tw play runs of over 20 yards, pass plays over 25, 30 yards. You know, you get when you get or when you're able to get big chunks of yardage, it it really Im impacts the psyche of the game of the opposite team. So the ability to win the big play battle is going to come down to discipline on the back end for e each one of the teams. Whose safeties can cover uh, cover down on those those defenders? And like here on this play, safety sits on on a route. A guy runs by him. We cannot sit on routes. We have to understand what our keys are. And our receivers on our end, you see here, play action, use that speed, go after the, their, their safeties and attack their safeties downfield and get those big, big chunk yardage plays. And that's going to you know, really help us, you know, open this game up. I mean, it, I really think whoever wins this big play battle is going to, you know, set, set the tone for the entire game. Because if you can win that big play, you're get eating up a lot of chunk yardage and you're putting yourself in a position to make uh, plays like this and getting the ball in the end zone. I think it's very interesting you said during the presser, Reggie, how both of these teams are very similar, so it'll make it easier to practice against that you know, second team defense and offense. And you got to think these type of things are factored into those daily practices for both the Wolverines and the Irish. Your second key to the game, pressure Devin Gardner. He looked pretty sharp against App State. 13 for 14, 173 yards, three touchdowns. He left the game in the third quarter. How important is it to gonna get some pressure in the face of, of the big Michigan quarterback? We saw with the, uh, against Rice the importance of, you know, and, and they kind of, and Coach Kelly talked about in the press conference. And, you know, pressure is getting him off his, his points, not allowing him to get comfortable in the pocket, forcing him to step right, step left, don't let him get comfortable, and then don't let him run. A part of that is also containing him with the, with the mobile quarterback. Yeah, you want to get pressure, but at the same time, you don't want to break down your, your, um, the rush lanes and give him openings to break your defense down and get into the secondary or get, get to that next level. So containment and pressure, so collapse that pocket around him. The ends, when they get upfield, they have to be measured in how far they get upfield so they're not creating lanes underneath that allow him to escape out, out the back end. And you see it, you know, with our front seven this past week. You know, Rice's quarterback was quite mobile, but we kept him off balance. He was never sure of where, you know, where we were coming from, and that goes back to the, the defensive pressures that we're going to see. But I really feel we have to actually get there this time. Against Rice, we were right there in a position. You see here where we forced the inter interception. That's not being comfortable in the, in the pocket, getting out of the pocket, but keeping that pressure on him, forcing him to step up, forcing him to pull the ball down, and then have someone to keep him contained. And when we get there, we got to make the play. And lastly, the third key uh, to the game for you, Reggie, hidden yardage and special teams. You heard Coach Kelly say it in the press conference where the turf lended itself to making quicker cuts, getting off the ball faster, planting their feet. I loved what, what Cody Riggs and Greg Bryan and Amir Carlisle did in the, the return game. You feel like they're going to pop one off any second. So talk about special teams. And Michigan did block a punt for a touchdown in that App State game too. Exactly. The, the thing that, uh, you know, stat that I want to say, average starting position for our offense, the 36-yard line. You know, 25 versus 36, you're talking 11 yards. But those 11 yards are huge. Those, that can be the difference between being 
uh, uh, being a touchdown or, and being a punt. You know, and that's the thing that you don't really see these. You know, you look at the, the, that return yardage, and right here he takes the ball on about the 19-yard line, makes, makes the plant, gets up field, and he's running, and he gets up close to the 44-yard line. That is a huge chunk of yards where your offense could have been starting maybe on the, you know, you know, the last couple of years, <laughs> we'd been starting about the 20. And the difference is instead of starting on the 19, we're starting on the 45. We're starting here, you, great, making a great play. We're starting on their side of the field. That, those hidden yards through punts, coverage, our punt coverage looked a lot better. Um, kickoff coverage, it's great having a kicker that can put the ball in the end zone so you're not worried about a return. So all these things factor in to where their average starting, you know, they were starting about the 25-yard line where we're 11 yards, 11 yard difference, and that's because we're doing a better job of containing and getting down the field using speed from a personnel standpoint to speed to power to get down there in the cover. And on the return game, you got, as he said, we got some fearless guys that can get that ball back and going in the back in, the, uh, in north and south in the direction that you want it to go. Big kudos to special teams coach Scott Booker. He's done a fantastic job. I know he's put a lot of work into that unit. But uh, wrapping things up, we, we can't talk Notre Dame, <laughs> Michigan, without uh, showing some vintage Reggie Brooks magic. Bush, cue it up the video. Number one, <laughs> Notre Dame. Number four, Michigan, September 15th, 1990. Uh, Elvis Gerbach driving for the Wolverines. Tell me about... You know, the freshman from Tulsa, Reggie Brooks, the defensive back. Um, you know, that was the one thing that, you know, coming in, you know, I was considered an athlete. <laughs> and we didn't have a lot of uh, – I was actually the only – I didn't think – there was no defensive back recruited in my year. So we were a little thin. We graduated a few guys. So, you know, it's kind of like what they were talking about, uh, James Anawalu. You know, you, you go where you're needed. You know, you be up your, wherever you can get on the field and play – and that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to get out there and get have an opportunity to play, and I was able to make a, a, a play on the defensive side of the ball that you know was not that really helped seal the game. And the the, the video's queued up here, September 1992, Notre Dame, Michigan. Uh, they call it the unconscious touchdown. What can you say about this pitch from Rick Meyer that you haven't said before, Reggie? <laughs> well, I knew he was going to pitch it. <laughs> that was first and foremost. Rick was not big on. He was not a big option quarterback. He didn't want to take the hit. So I knew I was going get to the, get the ball uh, when I saw, like I said, when we got, got to the edge. But it, it still comes down to you just play the game. You have fun. You have fun playing the game. You have fun with your teammates. And, you know, as I talk, talk to a lot of the guys on the current team, you know, enjoy this because it, it doesn't last long. You had some big moments against Michigan. How bad do you want Notre Dame to win? Oh, my gosh, we have to win this game. Because <laughs> I know of several Michigan guys that I played with, I played against, that you know, I keep in contact with, and if, if we don't win, I know I'm gonna hear about it. So, fellas, I don't want to hear Michigan's mouth. So let's take care of business. <laughs> that will do. Uh, that'll do it for us today, uh, Irish fans. Remember, watching D is your home for all kinds of great Notre Dame football content. Seriously, get on there right now. Uh, once you click off this on our website, bring up the app on your smartphone and tablet and look at all this great exclusive stuff um, from the Rice game. And uh, a lot of great content, of course, coming up here on Watch and D this week of Thursday Night Classics. It's going to be another great one against Michigan. Uh, the Brian Kelly Radio Show is on Thursday. we got men's soccer, number one men's soccer versus Dartmouth and Kentucky this weekend. And, of course, Reggie will be back with Jack Nolan on the post-game radio show following the Michigan game. So, for Reggie Brooks, I'm Ryan Camden. Go Irish, beat Wolverines.